Ladies and gentlemen, what we have just witnessed in Game 4 between the Boston Bruins and the Florida Panthers was definitely something. And I'm going to be talking about this game here in this video, as well as I'm sure what everybody is looking for, and the no goaltender interference call on Sam Bennett. So bear with me here. I'm not even going to ask you to subscribe in this video because I'm sure you're all feeling the same way I am now with extreme frustration with this team, with the referees, and just the entire NHL as a whole at this point. But let's go straight into the video here, starting off just with the game recap, because I only want to touch on this for a little bit until we get into some BS from what we've noticed in this game. But I'm going to pull up the box score here, first of all. Nothing special to see here except Jeremy Swayman once again playing a phenomenal game. You know, there's not much he could have done at this point when he's getting no help from the defense, no help from the offense for the most part. And his team's really not shooting the puck to be able to get him some insurance goals to get a win when he's saving 39 shots out of 42 and only letting in three goals and a 929 save percentage. But apart from that, the team started off hot. You know, they came out pretty quick. Got two goals early, looked good for the most part until the collapse happened that we know what really happened, and I'm not going to get too much into it until a bit later, but pulling up the stat card, as you know, a pretty vi good visual representation of the positive and the negative, and there was some okay, okay stuff, I guess we could say, from uh, some of the players here. Brandon Carlo played a great game, that's about it, but... You know, there. Are, well, I shouldn't say that. There's a lot of a lot of people who did some very small good things. A lot of things that you know won't show on this type of this type of visual analytics card. But Charlie McAvoy, right down at the bottom once again, as he has been this entire playoff series, wasn't his worst game. Wasn't his best, but not much better than what we've seen for the entire playoff run of the Boston Bruins. But from what we've seen here, from what we've seen in this game, I, I'm at a, I'm at a point now where we need to reevaluate what this team has been doing here in these playoffs, especially on, uh, you know, the power play, the penalty kill, even strength, just about any point of the 60 minutes that these two teams are on the ice. Whether it's the Toronto Maple Leafs, whether it was the Florida Panthers, whoever it is on the ice against the Boston Bruins, we need to take a look at this and just see what's, what's happening because it is getting ridiculous. Frankly, this is actually getting to a point where I'm questioning what this team's goal is in these playoffs because in this round apart from game one which i'm not even going to consider a part of this round this is not this series game one of this was game eight of round one so far what we've seen here in this round in in round two against the florida panthers the boston bruins have not done anything this team has not had over 20 shots i believe since that game and i could even be wrong on that but since that game there has not been, I believe, over 20 shots from this team. And I'm going to pull this up. I was going to save this for later. But this is a perfect opportunity to discuss this. Connor Ryan put this out, as well as everybody, every analyst who was watching this game at that point. The fans were chanting at TD Garden, shoot the puck when they were on the power play. They would not shoot the puck. One thing that they needed to do, we've mentioned it in every video, every post game, every pregame, every news video. What does this team need to do to be able to go out, help this team win and beat the Florida Panthers, help Jeremy Swayman out a bit in net, shoot the puck, get opportunities on net. You have sh If you shoot the puck, you have three scoring opportunities. Either goes in, it's a face-off or it's a rebound. Either of those would be an excellent scoring opportunity with this Boston Bruins team, the way it's made up in front of this net. But what have we done? We've not shot the puck, the one thing that we needed to do. Now, I'm going to just go uh, skip over this for a bit. Go to, I know what most of you guys are waiting to hear, and this is the no goal call, or uh, the good goal call, sorry. My, I was thinking it was, should have been a no goal because that is the right call. It should not have been a goal, but John Shannon had to say about the Sam Bennett push Charlie Coyle into Jeremy Swayman, not giving him the opportunity to save the puck, and it goes in, and it's called a goal and stands. This is from the NHL Situation Room. The video review supported the referee's call on the ice that the shove by Florida Sam Bennett on Charlie Coyle and the subsequent contact with Jeremy Swayman did not prevent Swayman from playing his position in the crease prior to Bennett's goal. I did not see one person who agreed with this call on Twitter, X, the broadcast. We've seen how infuriated Jim Montgomery is. Just about every Bruins fan in the stadium, the commentators, 
everybody on Twitter. This call was, quite honestly, one of the worst calls I've ever seen in my life. Now, granted, that goes in, good goal, okay. Still, it would not have mattered because the Bruins were taking too many penalties, not shooting the puck, to, to be able to tie it up or even take a lead at that point afterwards. The Bruins had nothing to it, try and increase their lead at that point. So, realistically, that change in the game, although it made the go or it was a go-ahead goal for the Panthers, it really wouldn't have mattered because the Bruins would not have gotten another opportunity at all in this game, regardless of if that was in or not. So, that's over. That's the past. I hate complaining about the referees. I don't like it because most times, you know, it's in the heat of the moment, and I know that this could be as well. But from the reactions from what I've seen, from me rewatching it already several times, I see I saw no way that this was a good goal at all. At all. There was no chance that this was a clean path to the net. There was no way Jeremy Swayman could have saved that shot if he wanted to, because Charlie Coyle was on top of him from a cross check by Sam Bennett. Now, I'm gonna move on from that. I don't want to get into this too much tonight. This will be spoken about tomorrow in a live stream and a video, most likely. Live stream, I will try and do one tomorrow afternoon. And just check the community tab uh, it, to make sure I am, if you're watching this at any point, um, you know, tomorrow morning. But this is going to be a big topic of conversation, at least for the next for the next couple days over here on this channel. But another tweet from here from Mike Sullivan. He said, I'm going to need you to hear a real good explanation from the league on why that Benicle was not overturned. Through four games in the series, the power play opportunities looks as this. The Florida Panthers have had 21 power plays, and Boston has had 11. Florida's 12 power play in the last two games. Now, a lot of this, not on the referees. No, absolutely not. That's on the Bruins not, you know, not, not taking any penalties. They're getting sucked into Florida's game. The goaltender interference on Morgan Geeky, that was just no awareness. Hampus Lindholm. The interference of Matthew Kachuk. Puck was in Matthew Kachuk's feet. I can see it going both ways. Delay a game from the unsuccessful challenge. Could never have been an unsuccessful challenge. Hampus Lane interference on Ekman Larson. Once again, another situation I can see going back and forth. The high sticking from Pat Maroon. Absolutely a penalty. Pat Maroon was careless with the stick. And David Pashnak roughing against Anton Nundell. That was just the heat of the moment coming off the top of the game, which I was okay with that. However, too many penalties have taken place in this series from Boston. And, um, you know, they had an okay penalty kill, but still, once again, too many penalties to give Florida power play opportunities. Jeremy Swayman is only so good. He could be the best goalie in the NHL. 21 power plays still aren't in favor of anybody. So there's not much that could have happened in this game. The Bruins, the Bruins sunk themselves. They sunk their own ship in this game. I know that call was definitely a momentum, uh, momentum shifter, however. At the end of the day, the Bruins were having no no hope of getting another goal here on this game. Let's be honest. You know, I hate to say it. It really drives me nuts to say it. But the Bruins showed me nothing in this game near the end that made me think that they could come back and win this game. Because they were not doing this. They were not doing what the fans asked them to do. What everybody asked them to do. What I was saying watching this game on the TV. I was saying shoot the puck. They still didn't. There was open, open lanes, open everything, you know. Only so much you can do from a fan standpoint, as we've been saying, as we know, as we've discussed in the streams and the comments and everything. There's only so much we can do. And the Bruins have one chance to save their season in the next game. So we'll see if this kind of sparks anything under them. The Bruins are 0-25 when they're down 3-1 in the series. So why not this year? Why not make it this year to go 1-25? Do I think it's going to happen? Not a chance. But why not make it this year? Prove us wrong for once. So... You know, that's all I got here in this video. Let me know what you think about this whole game, mainly about the call. What do you think about this explanation from the NHL, from the video review situation room? Let me know what you think about it. Like I said, be sure to check up on the uh, the stream tomorrow. Community tab will let you know exactly what time, but that's the goal. Another video tomorrow coming farther on this, but that's all I got here in this video. Did enjoy? Give the video a like. Hit the sub button if you want. I know we're all frustrated at this point. I'll be keeping you up to date with this team, as I'm sure many of you know by now. But we don't know how many, how long it's longer we have with this team, so we got to enjoy it. Make sure to stick around for the ride and all the news. But like I said, I'm signing out. Thank you for watching. Appreciate all of you guys, but see you later.